Lord, we love you. We want to serve you. We want to be transformed by your power, mercy, and grace. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. In Christ's name. Amen. So Amen. good morning all. We are together Howdy. again. Just praising the Lord. Something good is going to happen. Something good in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. All right. So here we are. Well, let's pick it up again here. We're in uh, Acts 8.25. I liked uh, New King James this morning. So we get to do that. Uh, let's. So remember that the gospel has just gone forth to Samaria. That Philip the evangelist has preached to them. And they've just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When Peter and John came down. Um, or came up from Jerusalem. And so... That takes us to Acts 8.25. Acts 8.25. New King James. Here we go. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. I just want to comment on this for a kind of a radical transformation. They find out the gospel is breaking loose in Samaria, the Samaritan city, and then they go and watch the baptism in the spirit fall, and then they're on their way home. So on their way home, they don't high speed this journey. They, they stop in this village and tell them about Jesus. This Samaritan village, remember, and uh, there was certainly bad blood. Um, it's a pun, but don't worry about it. Uh, between the Samaritans and the Jews. And now, happily, they're being obedient and preaching the gospel all the way from Jerusalem, from Samaria to Jerusalem. It's a radical, their lives have been radically changed by the glory of God and the resurrection of Christ. And now they're preaching, they're preaching in the villages of Samaria. Okay, so... Yeah. Now, let's, let's read um, 26 and 27, please. Christ is preached to an Ethiopian. <clears throat> Acts 8, 26. Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go, down toward, go toward the south along the road, which goes down to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Gaza. Okay, yeah, that'd be hitting south, uh, west. Um, <clears throat> this is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charged all of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem uh, to worship. Okay, let's, so ref let's, let's refer to him as the treasurer rather than the eunuch. It, it, it distracts us uh, that way around. So here's a classic view. Here's a classic view, whoops, of the, of the treasurer traveling to Jerusalem. See, I don't like this picture in a number of reasons. First of all, from Ethiopia to Jerusalem, maybe 1,700 miles. So. That's what one of the commentators said. I, I, I can fight you on that, but I don't. It, it's reasonable. So how do you travel 1,700 miles? Well, if you have a, a horse-drawn chariot, that makes it simpler. But also, he is the most important person under, under the authority of the queen in Ethiopia. So my guess is he's traveling with an entourage with soldiers and with provisions and um, the simple picture of him this is what we know the scripture says that he was traveling in a chariot but what we don't know is this is a big deal this treasurer in charge of all of the money of Ethiopia goes 
to Jerusalem to worship. Coming back, coming back is when Philip comes into the story. Let's, uh, okay. Yeah, this is a big deal. The relationship of Ethiopia to um, the Jews, Jerusalem is, is uh, extensive. It's a lot to drill down on there because they believe they are the keepers of the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And it's really, and they're charged, they believe they're charged with the responsibility of returning that ark to Jerusalem when the Messiah gets there. Uh, so, uh, this is the, um, you know, this is the context which we have to consider uh, what this man is doing there. And he was, in fact, signaling whether or not there, there was any indication that the uh, Messiah was either on his way uh, or... Um, or there was already there, etc. Uh, because right. the message itself was not yet. Right. right. So we we know that now, but perhaps at the time, the Ark of the Covenant stuff wasn't known. That it probably. I mean, I'm just saying it was. It may have been unknown where it was, but we now know, or we now suspect. Ethiopia or whatever, we know that in hindsight, but perhaps him going to Jerusalem wasn't a big deal because he was a believer in the faith. That's so right. It was I, a, I, I, I don't know. I'm traveling sure to Jerusalem deal. was a big deal logistically. Um, it's a lot of miles, and yeah. he's a substantial man. So he has he's in charge of the whole treasury. He comes to Jerusalem to worship and was returning back to Ethiopia down that road that Richard just talked about being south. Okay, and 28. Yeah, 28. Yeah, um, uh, let's see, Ethiopia's treasury uh, and had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. Uh, and in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. Which, which, so I, love, which I love if, uh, I love it either way because it's true. But if this is a armed chariot with all the uh, finest uh, defense soldiers in Ethiopia, this is a pretty bold move. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. ahead, go talk to the chariot. Like, um, if it's just a chariot rumbling along, that's, that's, uh, but that's, but there's, there's courage here in my view, that the Holy Spirit said, uh, go ahead. I think that the Holy Spirit, with him. I think that the Holy Spirit had control and Christ himself had control. You got to remember, and the, the distinction that we were talking about prior to, us going on that I found was that here it says the spirit of the Lord prior to that on his mission he was spent, sent by an angel of the Lord which I sometimes liken to Christ himself okay All now, the... I, I, I mean I don't know but then the spirit yeah, said to fine. sorry the spirit now, the said angel... to Philip go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Do you understand what you're reading? So Philip, go down this road uh, and not knowing what's there, by the way, and then seeing the treasurer in his chariot, and then the spirit says, go to him. And he runs to him. I love this picture. The visual for me is uh, not not passively, but uh, instantly being obedient and instantly running to yeah. do what he's called to do. Yeah, I love it. I love that too. <clears throat> okay, so it takes us down to 30. Uh, so Philip ran to him. And heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And Which is, she said, How can I understand? 
which is a reasonable, like, the treasurer doesn't know Philip, so it's a reasonable introduction to the, the treasurer to say, do you understand what you're reading? Yeah. He doesn't tell him what it says until he has permission to. It's a it's a perfect connection between between the cultures and between and the the linchpin here is the word of God. Book of yeah. Isaiah. We've got uh, Philip the deacon and runs up to him and he hears him reading so, so the uh, treasurer isn't uh, watching all around him. He's intently reading the Word of God. Yeah. So, so much so that when he hears the, the voice from Philip, he goes, Oh, okay, do you understand what you're reading? And now that takes us down to 31. Yeah. The obedience the yeah. obedience of Philip, you know, he just was obedient to God and to the Holy Spirit. He knew God, and he knew His voice. Yeah. What are you reading? Yeah. He says in verse thirty-one. He says, uh, "How can I, unless somebody guides me?" And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which it, uh, he was reading was this. This is uh, out of Isaiah 53, right? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Okay, so here we have this um, treasurer, this important man, going to Jerusalem to worship, 1,600, 1,700 miles, if the uh, commentators are right. He's coming back, and he's in Isaiah, exactly at the right place when Philip the evangelist comes by. It, the, the, uh, the magnitude of God's timing here just blows me away. He's reading yeah. in Isaiah about Christ, which gives Philip the perfect opportunity for verse 34. Verse 34. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this of, say this, of himself or of another man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Okay, so the, we have in one sentence a full teaching of Philip and, and the treasurer. But my sense is this wasn't a three-minute message. He, he opened up the word of God to this man, so much so that the guy said, well, here's water. What's keeping me from being water baptized? We don't know that Philip told him about water baptism, but he did, because otherwise the, the treasurer wouldn't know that that's something you should do. So he really opened up the scriptures to this learned man from a different culture. Now remember, the Acts 1.8, and we'll take the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the outermost parts of the earth. Well, Ethiopia is certainly part of the outermost parts of the earth. So they come down the road in the chariot, the discussions going on, teaching about the word of God, really, it would have been a lovely thing to be a fly on the wall and to see all of the things that they discussed between the time he jumped on the chariot and the time that they get to the lake or the pond or whatever it is. I, I just, the, to me, that the Holy Spirit just 
just rocks throughout the whole thing. I mean, as far as Philip and the, the eunuch and everybody involved here, it seems God's right on time. And we don't know the discussion, but the discussion was right on time too. Right. Um, so being obedient to the power of God and really listening to what he tells you and letting him, you know, how many times did, did Christ say, don't worry about what to say. Yeah. Just go and preach the gospel and I'll give you the words. That's you know, right. Don't worry about it. They went down the road, they came to some water, and the treasurer said, here's some water, what hinders me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's a radical testimony for a Jewish man to acknowledge that Christ is the Messiah. So this isn't just an intellectual belief. This is a real heart-rending, heart-thumping belief uh, we, we use the word believe softly. We, uh, I believe that there's, you know, Saturn, or I believe, oh yeah, I believe there's, gal there's a green galaxy or whatever. Um, but that's not the same as adherence. And the, 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 the power of the word is in adherence, not in just intellectual. It says, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And 38? Yep. Verse 38, So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. So and Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. <laughs> okay, so this is the only time that we see people teleported or whatever that is in the scripture. Well, uh, like this anyway. So it was it was an explanation point, exclamation point in the life of the treasurer that he was water baptized, he publicly testified that Jesus is the Messiah, and all of a sudden he goes under the water, comes out of the water, and Philip's gone. And you just think, and he goes away rejoicing. So it is a, um, it is a highlighted event. Now remember, this is the first time that we know about that anybody from Ethiopia has been converted. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the outermost parts of the earth. So the highlight of this is that Philip gets zoomed away and ends up in another place. And the treasurer now has insights into the scripture from these wonderful teachings of the disciple Philip all the way back. He's rejoicing in his new life in Christ and making a difference when he gets back into his homeland. And, and there's so much of that story we don't get, but we get enough. And Philip was found at Azutus, and passing through, he preached all the cities until it came to Caesarea. What an amazing... Sometimes the, the skeptics doubt so much of this uh, passage, but I am convinced that this passage is not only great, and not only true, but really fun, that the obedience of Philip led him to go to this place. And the obedience of Philip found the time at the exact moment that the uh, treasure, this important man from a, a culture far different, is reading Isaiah, and that the conversation goes together. The, this rich treasurer acknowledges Christ, is water baptized, and Phillips goes zooming off to another place. Just the coolest thing. I mean, I love, I love this account of what happened. 
Yeah, I just, uh, as you said, Pastor, the obedience the, of everybody in this whole thing, it's just, it just speaks for God, you know, and how he sees the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And That's right. The word, of God, the, the obedience and the word of God going through all these places, even places maybe that weren't friendly, but you can be assured that this guy was in charge of all this stuff. His word had weight. So yeah. he went back and rejoicing. I'm sure he told other people about it. You Amen. Know? So, yeah. Final thoughts, Rich? No. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's got so many um, aspects, so many facets. Uh, that um, we can spend quite a bit of time analyzing each here. The uh, but the core the core uh, issue is uh, what is what uh, what the, the moment of conversion, so to speak. We're not you know we don't really know what the convers how the conversation went between uh, Philip and the eunuch. We don't know the words exactly. The King James put the. Uh, final verses that we find most important in quotes. Uh, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. And he said, answers, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That certainly is the issue right there. Um, if you believe, baptism is merely, a, 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 it's like body language, if you will, uh, for the expression of your faith. Amen. That you would uh, show the uh, death, resurrection, the uh, death, burial, and re resurrection uh, through the baptism process. Um, it's body language for what we say in words. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God yes. and is my resurrection. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful account, this world-changing account of what happens when we're obedient. We would ask for great grace this day to walk like you call us to walk, to think like you call us to think, to speak like you call us to speak, and to be silent like you call us to be silent. Lead us, guide us, fill us again and again and again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for this message and the obedience, Lord God, and the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. And when we do, the power of you, Lord God, in our lives. And I thank you, Lord God, for your guidance, for your Holy Spirit, and for all that you teach us on a daily basis, Lord God. And for your word that we can rely on it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you again for the instruction that you've afforded us here, that uh, we may have these insights into how we might express our faith in you uh, through water baptism. And uh, we pray for your continued direction that we might live that life of faith uh, in obedience to your call. Um, and we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed, joyous day, all. Amen and amen and amen.